Hello and welcome to a special show we have for you today. Uh, with the new gym, gym, jump season up and running, we are delighted to be joined by 2020-21 champion jockey Harry Skelton, who will give us his thoughts on the season ahead and pick out some of the yard stable stars. This season, Harry is a brand ambassador for personal finance app Bet Budget. It's a tool that lets punters collate financial details across their betting accounts and privately share affordability information with bookies in one click. With it being safe for gambling week this week, the ability to see your position across all your accounts and set limits on your spend is great news for punters. So if you're having a bet this week or at the weekend, be sure to check out betbudget.app or download it on the Google Play and the App Store now. Harry, thanks for joining us. We spoke to you earlier in the year about all things Cheltenham ahead of the 22 uh, festival. Um, it's nice to be able to catch up ahead of the 2022-23 jump season um, to talk about yours and, and Dan's team heading into the new season. How's all the preparation gone ahead of the year? Yeah, they've been very happy with all the horses. They're exactly where we want them. Um, obviously, a little bit tricky with the weather. Um, we're just waiting for that rain to come, but it looks like it might be on the horizon now. So, um, no, we're happy with all the horses and they're in good form. As everyone can see, they're winning. So, um, no, the team are in good form. Yeah, as I looked, you had two winners on Kempton, um, I think from two rides on, on Sunday. And obviously, it really starts to get going, doesn't it, the jump season now. And now we're just going to jump into like a mini stable tour. Some of the horses, some of your bigger horses, some of the lesser known horses that um, will be running this season. Just go through and have a talk through some of their plans they might have ahead of the season. So we're going to start at the top. And, and All Mankind's obviously been a great horse for you um, over the last few years, over both hurdles and fences. Um, will he mix it up at both codes again this season or is there other plans for him? Yeah, obviously, last year we got a run into him before he went on and, and won the old Roan. Uh, that's not the case this year. Just struggled to get a run into him. Um, so he hasn't actually been entered for the old round. So we'll just um, try and get going with him when we can. Uh, he's in, in, you know, doing plenty of work. Um, the handicap has obviously got him right up there still. And, um, you know, hopefully he's still mixing it in that grade. Um, but it's going to be a bit harder to place him, I feel, you know, sort of this year, you know, try and find that first race. We're not sure where it'll be yet, but... Um, look, I think two mile, two and a half mile hurdles or fences will mix it up a bit. Maybe something, you know, like the Sylvaniaca Conti Chase at Kempton might come into play. Um, you know, another good handicaps as well. Um, but he's in good form. Um, he's been a great horse, six time graded winner, um, two grade ones. So it uh, doesn't earth an awful lot. Um, but he's in good form. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting him out. Yeah, he's been an extremely tough horse over the last few years, haven't you, for you? So, yeah, as you said, he owes you nothing, but obviously a big season ahead. Um, another big horse for you over the last few years has been uh, Protectorat, um, third in the Gold Cup last year. I'm guessing that's probably going to be the big aim again, but what's likely to come before that? Yeah, Protectorat, obviously, did, you know, great last year, winning the many clouds, um, going on and finishing third in the Gold Cup. Um, so it's, you know, really good that we've got this sort of calibre of horse in the yard, but um, he's in good form. He's doing lots of work um, and he'll start off up at Haydock in the Betfair chase um, and then go on from there. Um, where we'll go after that, um, we'll just see. But um, all roads will probably lead back to Cheltenham to have another go at the Gold Cup. With Protector, obviously, when he won the many clouds, it was quite well. The ground looked atrocious really that day. Is he a horse that definitely needs that or can he go on good ground as well? I think to see him at his absolute best, he'd want plenty of cut in the ground. OK, yeah, it, it looked that way, but obviously he's a very tough horse um, anyway. Um, another horse we're going to go on to um, is third time Lucky. Um, is, there looks to be more to come from this horse. He looked quite a tricky ride last season, even though holding quite a lot of ability. Um, where do you go with third time Lucky? Third time Lucky will start off in the Holden Gold Cup, um, two mile around Exeter. Um, you know, I think that's a good starting point for him. He's done loads of work at home. Um, Last year we sort of we got it a little bit. He did well, obviously, and and won up at uh, Doncaster on the Lightning, obviously his chase. Um, and was very impressed with Cheltenham as well. So he had a good year, but we almost a couple of times probably rode him a little bit wrong, made too much use of him. And with his jumping, we sort of like you know sort of let him get on with it and used his jumping. But he, he's such a good, strong travelling horse. He's better probably coming off the pace a little bit. So. Um, I think he, he wants a real fast run race um, and uh, we'll just be sort of holding on to him a little bit more um, rather than sort of, you know, using all that exuberance um, too soon, really. But he'll start off in the Holden Gold Cup and that'll tell us a lot more after that race where we'll go after. 
Yeah, because obviously you tried him from the front um, a couple of times last season and then obviously dropping back, that's quite interesting um, to hear that. Um, another nice horse uh, is West Cork. Obviously, very consistent performer for you last year when the the great woods uh, and perform really well on the counter hurdle and finish in four. What's next for West Court? Because he has gone up slightly in the handicap, hasn't he? He has, and obviously didn't really end the season very well when coming down three out at Haydock with uh, every chance, really. I felt like I was just starting to make my move when he fell in Swinton. Um, he's actually been schooling over fences, um, been schooling very well. Um, he's got better the more he's done. Um, he's a point to point winner, so hopefully that won't be a problem. We'll start off over fences, in a you know in a smaller sort of grade if you like in a lower grade and hopefully build his confidence up um if you can get a few wins under his belt over fences um low key then hopefully we'll try him in a bigger race um but he's in good form um he doesn't show you an awful lot at home to be honest that's him um but he's you know he's fit and healthy yeah it could be a nice type to see uh, over fences this season uh, molly's ollie's wishes um obviously she she's been a really smart mare for you um What's her plan for the season? Molly Ollie's wishes has been great. Um, obviously winning last year up at Weatherby um, over two miles and then winning at Ascot um, over three miles. So um, she's very versatile, very tough mare. Um, she, all roads will lead back to uh, Ascot to have her in her absolute peak for there. Hopefully, if we get enough rain, she will start off um, up at Weatherby again. But we'd have to see it be good to soft for her to run there um, over two miles. She's in good form, but all roads lead back to Ascot. OK, that's good to hear. Um, Nuba Negra's been a brilliant horse um, over the last few years, like many of your horses have. Superb two-mile chaser for the yard. Um, will he go down the same route uh, this season as usual, or are you going to try something different with Nuba Negra this season? No, he'll go um, to Cheltenham for the Schler. Um, he obviously won that very well last year, and that's where he'll start again. Um, this horse doesn't take too much racing, really. He likes to be very fresh. He puts an awful lot into his work at home and he puts an awful lot into it when he goes to the track as well. You know, he's always sort of, he's always giving you plenty. You know, he's never sort of underdoing himself at home. He, he gives you a lot and he puts a lot into a race as well. Um, so that's probably why maybe he can't take too many races. But he'll start off in the Schler and then that will pick it race by race. Maybe over Christmas, Kempton might suit him again. Um, and then maybe a tilt back at Queen Mother Champion Chase. Um, but the main starting point is the slur. Yeah, the Champion Chase this year obviously looks a cracker if Shishkin comes back as well. Um, and he was unlucky, wasn't he, two seasons ago um, in, that, in that race. So hopefully he can go well in that for you. Um, a handicapper we're just going to talk about is Langer Dan. Obviously he was well handicapped horse last season. He was unlucky at the Cheltenham Festival when being brought down. But obviously he went on um, to do well at Aintree and went at the Grand National Meeting. What's next for, uh, next for him? Um, you'll see Langadan start off in a two and a half mile condition hurdle at Aintree. Um, I feel this race might be quite a good race. I think um, normally is you know a lot of sort of horses that are, um, people are sort of testing the waters whether they can go up into graded company. Um, I do feel Langadan really improving. Um, he showed that last year and at home as well. I'm very happy with him. So he'll start off at Aintree in a two mile, uh, two and a half mile conditions hurdle, and then we'll see where we go after that think probably we'll look to step him up in trip sometime um look the dream is to try and make him a world hurdle horse um it's not beyond him okay that's good to hear um a horse probably not known uh, as, as, as much as your other horses is in this world um it looked really exciting prospect for yourself and dan um off the back of his maiden win he did have a setback didn't he and is it everything okay and is you what's his plans this season yeah, he is okay. Um, actually, he's uh, he's trotting away now at the minute. Um, we just got held up really last year. He got a bad cut um, after the race at Warwick. Um, that just put him back. Um, and then there was a complication with the cut, and it just basically he just ran out of time basically. Um, but he's trotting away now. Um, yeah, what you saw at Warwick, very classy horse with a lot of pace. Um, I would think um, those sort of big two mile handicaps in the spring would be something we'd be looking towards. I know it's a long way away, maybe something like the Scottish champion hurdle, um, those sort of races, but um, we'd look to run him maybe after Christmas time. If he went and won, we'd maybe have to dip our toe into something like the Kingwell. Um, but those sort of races, you know, you'd have to go and win well. 
um, and then we'd try him in the higher graded races and see how he fared. But obviously not much experience, but a lot of ability. Yeah, he looks really exciting and he's good to hear you could have some of the, some of those plans uh, in the future. Um, Shamblu, obviously a horse you've got a great connection with. You, you were really unlucky with him in the Charlie Hall when he looked, looked like he was going to go and win. Um, is he going to be campaigning through, uh, the same throughout the season or what are you going to do with Shamblu? Yeah, Shamblu um, has been doing loads of work. Uh, the plan is to go to the Charlie Hall, um, but I just at the minute, like they need some rain you know so it's got to rain a bit um but he's doing loads of work and um yeah we hope to head back to the charlie hall haven't really thought about much uh after that yeah it's been the same all season really if you, even if you look at the flat it's been very very dry hasn't it which is brilliant for the flat horse but for jump sources they need a bit of cup don't they so yeah you might just have to wait for further in the winter uh my drogo obviously grade one winner over hurdles um, I think he also had a setback last term, um, but he's a serious horse that a lot of people were talking about ahead of last season. Um, what's the plans with my Drogon? Is everything OK? Yeah, he's actually just come back now um, and just started very light work. Um, and look, there'd be no rush at all, um, you know, to, to all these viewers that are, that are watching. Um, it's just going to be a case of sitting and waiting to see if he makes his uh, reappearance in the spring or not his health is good um touch wood um his legs and everything are, are fine um but it's just going to be a long road and i can't tell you whether he'll make his reappearance in the spring or whether it'll be next autumn okay okay that, that that's nice to hear but obviously it's nice his health's okay because he's a really exciting horse um when he's all okay we, we could be here all day going through all your horses but i'm just going to finish with one more <laughs> Um, and it's Dr. Parnassus, uh, a good juvenile last season, wasn't he? He came from David O'Meara on the flat and he showed plenty of form. Um, what's his aims this term? Dr. Parnassus to start off at Cheltenham um, on Saturday, four-year-olds only uh, hurdle. It's very difficult for these four-year-olds after their juvenile year. They've only got two chances to take on their own age group, um, basically, and as a four-year-old. That was one race at Chepstow, which we've already had, and this is the other one. So these races get do get aimed at by some good horses, um, but he'll start off at Cheltenham uh, in in the four year olds only. Um, he's in good form. Doesn't again doesn't show you an awful lot at home, um, but he you know he is a he's a high class horse, and I feel that probably as we move on into the spring, we might see him up in distance. That's good to hear. Um... Obviously, like I said, we could run through loads, but we could be here all day. So thanks for that, running through those horses. Um, obviously, winning the champion jockey's title for yourself um, in 2021 season was a huge accomplishment. Uh, and you've gone to see what Brian Hughes has been doing uh, in the past few seasons. And it was a brilliant battle. Um, this season, is that something you're looking to accomplish again? Or is the yard looking at more trying to win the bigger races throughout the season? Yeah, well, obviously, if, if I'm in a position to challenge for a championship again, you know, give give everything um, like we did before. Um, we just haven't really had them summer horses. So um, we've got a lot of horses in now that are, um, you know, obviously more winter horses. Um, and look, we just want to win as many races as we can. And yeah, if we can win the better ones, even better. Um, but I feel like the, the quality of the horses are, are, you know, rising all the time. Um, but look, um, the main thing is for us is um, just to try and get as many winners as we can. And um, yeah, um, the quality is coming, um, which is good to see. So what, what's something you would love to achieve personally this season? What's the standout goal? Is it a race you haven't won or just obviously everyone wants to win the big races? But is there something yourself you want to achieve? Um, not really. I just, I'd love to just um, you know, keep, keep the women's winners coming and, and look, and love to get, uh, you know, those grade ones are very, very good and special. And, um, you know, I'd love to win a few more grade ones. And um, hopefully we can, you know, with a bit of luck, we might get one or two this year. So, um, but they're hard to come by, you know. Um, but we've got a lot of quality about and hopefully we can get a few more graded winners on the board. Yeah, they're not easy to come by, obviously. So any one you can get um, is brilliant. So we're going to look at, go back up to some of the horses um for you and Dan that you've got um we're just going to ask for a novice hurdler from the yard to follow this season um well obviously we've been doing plenty of schooling at home um and we've got a good bunch of mares um if I was going to give you one to follow I'd give you Miss T um she's an uh, a point-to-point winner 
um, a filly by Flame and Glory. We like what we see at home and she'll be making a debut in the next sort of three weeks, um, providing we get the rain. Um, but um, we feel hopefully she could be quite good. That's Miss T. Miss T. OK, that's definitely one for the track. I'm going to ask you the similar question. This now for a novice chaser to follow. So maybe one coming from the hurdles last season. Yeah, um, again, uh, novice chasers, um, it's always exciting, you know, when you start schooling them and some surprise and, you know, some don't take to it as well. But um, Sherlock Jack has, has taken defences very well at home. He's a horse, an awful lot of ability. Um, he'd forget his run at Kelso. Um, he'd won two novice hurdles very easy. We're getting on later on in the year and we had to run him in a better race somewhere. It, apart from going to Cheltenham or Aintree, um, we were hoping to go to Aintree, but the ground sort of dried out for him. We didn't really want to go to Cheltenham because we didn't feel he was right, ready to do so that year. We went up to Kelso and he, he didn't run very well, but it was too sharp a track for him and he put a line through that form. But he's taken defences very well at home. Um, he's got a hell of a lot of ability and um, hopefully if he puts that to the track, he could be very good. Lovely stuff. Um, so obviously we talked about Langadan earlier and he was a well-handicapped horse for yourself uh, last season. Is there anyone else in the yard this, this season that you think is well-handicapped and could go and win a few handicaps and maybe go on to bigger and better things throughout the season? Um, if I was going to give you one, I would say a horse called Fred Darm. Um, he's actually got some good form in the book. Um, was just over the top when we ran him at Kempton, needed a holiday. Um, he's better than that. And he will start down the novice handicap chase route. Could be quite interesting. OK, lovely stuff. Um, and yeah, if you wouldn't mind giving us one horse so we haven't heard of that, that's really exciting you at home um, for viewers that should watch out for ahead of the season. Um, well, yeah, we've got a few new horses obviously come to the yard. Um, it's hard, I suppose, to just, you know, go and put your finger on one. Um, but if, we you've recruit... a, if you've got a few, if you've got a few, you can give us a few. Yeah, I'm, if you could put your finger on one, um, we recruited a good horse off the flat called Father of Jazz. He was rated 102, I think, at his best. Um, took everything in his stride, really, here. Um, been schooling quite nice and he will make his debut again in the next sort of three weeks um, but it's high quality flat horse if he you know can push that over to hurdles could be a very interesting horse yeah father of jazz I think he was for Roger Berrien wasn't he on, on the flat so yeah interesting yeah. father of jazz um, and just a final question Harry um, is there a horse away from your uh, stable with you and Dan that you're excited to see this season obviously you've got the honeysuckles and all that but is there a horse you, you were against last season you thought oh this could be special next season well, if, I, if I'm looking forward to watching one, it'd be Constitution Hill, only because we don't really have anything to take him on and we won't be in the races he's in. So, um, yeah, uh, he looks very, very special um, and I'll be on the champion hurdle route, won't he? So um, he'd be one I'd be looking, you know, looking forward to watching anyway. Um, like I said, I don't think we've got anything to sort of go down the champion hurdle route so he can win as many races as he wants. <laughs> yeah, constitutional. He's already six to four for that champion, else, and he's very exciting. Harry, um, thanks so much for joining us for this, and thanks for uh, answering all the questions. We wish you all the best for the season, uh, and thanks again. No worries. Thanks.